It's time to dust off your favourite chair and sit in front of the big screen TV. Get a drink in your hand because it's five o'clock somewhere. Your number one host, the thunder from down under, a man on a quest to make money for beer. Sparring DK presents... Rejected Regen Rebuild Newcastle United. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new series. This is a rejected Regen Rebuild with Newcastle United. They've been given a billion dollars in transfer wages and uh, we've got some things to take care of. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're a continued supporter, thank you for returning. Now, uh, there's a little bit of a backstory here to really get you invested into this particular series. Um, the Youth Edition was our first series, and this is the first time that I've actually continued a save. So we've played seven seasons thus far through this career mode with Bolton, uh, gone from League Two all the way through and won the Champions League. Now, Thor Gunnarsson, our manager, has decided to move on, and he's taken the reins here at Newcastle United. Now, we've got a bit of a task Thor Gunnarsson wants a new challenge. You know, he's done it all with Bolton, but uh, he's got some unfinished business, and that's what we're here to take care of in this career mode. So we've got a few things to take care of. Uh, I'll run you through everything that's going to be happening. So without further ado, let's get into this one. All right, first and foremost, I'll just quickly fill you in that uh, Schultze was named player of the tournament in the Champions League, which is uh, nice to see, and there he is holding the trophy. And, well, the youth edition is done for another year. Thor Gunnarsson, though, has moved on to Newcastle United. And uh, he's got some unfinished business. There was a lot of players that we did sign through the Bolton series that, you know, got moved on because they got picked up by bigger clubs or felt that they weren't good enough. The board decided to move them on. But Thor Gunnarsson feels that some of those kids may have, you know, a future uh, in football. And that's what he's here to do today. We're going to try and chase down Bolton. Uh, here in the Premier League, and then maybe get European football. But the, the idea behind this is that we can only sign players that were signed for Bolton and then moved on. Um, so those regens and, and youth academy players will go ahead and try and bring as many of those into the squad as possible. And we've also shortlisted all of the Bolton players. So if Bolton decides to try and move someone along in the transfer window, we can swoop in and try and bring them here back to rejoin with Thor Gunnarsson and uh, really have a crack at Bolton. I'm kind of hoping that Bolton uh, keeps their squad together because I want to take them on and uh, you know see if we can beat them. We know what kind of team they are if you have followed the Youth Edition series. Um, absolutely a destructive squad that we built there. And, and it's time to see what we can do here with this, this underdog story. Can some of these young lads come through the ranks and, and make a, a greatness name for themselves? Right, so we've got a massive transfer budget. So that, that should be fine. We should be able to sign most of the players that we want to bring in, providing those clubs are willing to uh, let them go. We can overpay. That, that, there's no doubt about that. We just want to bring those players in here to this Newcastle squad. All of the current players in the Newcastle squad, all the real players have been transfer listed. I want to ship them all out, bring on those uh, regens and, and youth academy players back. Uh, maybe some of the current Bolton players, if they do go up for sale, as well as uh, investing in our youth academy. I mean, it's hard to, to see the youth players coming through with such a short time till FIFA 22, but you know, that's what we like to do on this channel. So uh, we will continue to get out there and scout for fresh young talent. So board objective wise, they want us to sign four players in our youth academy uh, across various positions. Uh, brand exposure, they want us to get a streak of five wins in home matches. That could be a little bit tricky depending on what players we do manage to bring in and sign one crucial first team player in a midfield position. Continental success, nothing because we won't be in that. Uh, a mid table finish is reasonable, but I would like to have a red hot crack and see where we end up and the round of 16 in the FA Cup but financial critical priority is to reduce the wages by 135 grand uh, hopefully bringing in some cheaper players uh, and offloading most of this squad will help that but they also want us to sign three crucial players and make a profit of 180,000 pounds that's that's tricky we'll see what we can do Right, so on our uh, short list I have gone and put every player that is currently on the Bolton list uh, you know Big players, 
big, big players, but lots of young and up and comings like Edvin Berg that really didn't get an opportunity to shine at Bolton. If he comes up for transfer, he's definitely one that I will be going after. Um, but, you know, some of these youngsters may look to get their way out of the door at Bolton and maybe they will rejoin Thor Gunnison here uh, at Newcastle United. But we really need to get into the nitty gritty of, you know, what players are available. Um, so as we get through all of the Bolton, all right, let's have a quick look here. I mean, we could go after Lazaro, a decent right back at 84. We're going to need some bigger players around this squad. Gruber's currently at Dortmund. Uh, Solomon at, at, at Atlanta, but I believe he has uh, got a move. Uh, yes, he, he signed a pre-contract with another club, so I don't think he's going to be available for us. Uh, we've got Malka, Santi Suarez could make a return. Rude de Wolf is a, is a big one that uh, a lot of comments said, can we see him back? And, and he would be a good defensive unit to build this team around. We're going to need it uh, with, the, with this squad trying to take on Premier League teams, especially if, you know, we've got some 62-odd rated players. Uh, but, you know, there's some class players floating about. So we've got money. We'll see what we can do about uh, bringing back most of these players to the squad and uh, then have a red-hot crack at chasing down Bolton's legacy and seeing if these uh, underdogs can, you know, make a name for themselves of their own here. Uh, and the good thing is that there's quite a few free agents that we should be able to pick up quite comfortably to get us started. Um, Akuma is another big player that we would like to bring back. Really didn't get an opportunity to see him much at Bolton. He got picked up there by uh, Juventus. Um, so definitely some players to bring back. Right, the current Youth Academy has got some uh, some decent prospects here. Very low overalls, though. Um, so we've got Leandro Afolta from Switzerland. Uh, 50 overall. I mean, we could probably bring all these lads in and quickly send them out on a loan, see if they get a bit of an overall spike. Uh, Melvin Decker from the Netherlands at 58 overall. Nadir Elbasia from Algeria at 53 overall. Uh, Alejandro Diaz, another Chilean uh, in the Menendez form, but uh, up front. Uh, at 50 overall and Sigurd Johansson from Norway only 48 rated at this stage so uh, I will look to bring them in but let's get through the transfer stuff first and foremost uh, maybe bring some of those free agents and really start turning this squad into a Thor Gunnarsson project right so I'm thinking straight off the cuff let's get the free agents in because we're going to be able to get them fairly cheap Right, so we've signed up all the free agents. Uh, Tobias Wallace there on the left-hand side. Slots in Fredrickson at centre-back. And uh, Roger Thill from Luxembourg, the right-back at 74 rated. We've also got ourselves Kassoon, Payne and Rotenberg back into this squad. It's still day one, though. So uh, let's try and get some of these realistic players off the transfer list and see what deals we can do to bring in some of the bigger players that now uh, obviously have contracts. We need to see if we can get them across to Newcastle United. Right, straight off the bat, uh, there's interest in uh, Marcelino Gonzalez from Nantes for 10.6. Uh, and Laxanen has been approached by West Ham. So two players that we need to go in and see if we can secure their services. Right, so we get the signings done. Gonzalez up top at a 77 rated. And Jimmy Laxon makes the move from Bolton to rejoin Thor Gunnarsson here at 82 rated at centre-back. Right, pre-season tournament kicks off and Fulham get a 1-0 win. That's all right. We're still building the squad. Right, our next signing is uh, Mitsuharu Akuma, the Japanese left midfielder. We've got him back from Juventus. 82 rated, uh, so really a good bolstering for our squad. We do have a lot of left midfielders here, so I may need to look at uh, Kasun or Wallers and see what uh, other options we have to, to play them, maybe through the midfield. We'll keep one of them as the backup, probably Wallers. Uh, and maybe Kasun goes back into sort of a midfield position uh, with the, you know, development role. We'll see what happens there. We've still got a lot of work to do here in this transfer window. Second preseason game is against Monaco. It is a 2-0 loss. I guess the squad trying to gel. Uh, Gonzalez has uh, missed there. Looks like a penalty. Not a good start. Right, as we usually do, we will send out some scouts to uh, pick up some more Youth Academy prospects. So if you'd like to be a part of this, leave me some countries in the comments section. Thumbs up on the countries that you would like to see us visit. And uh, we will see what we can bring back throughout this career mode. To get things started, though, we're heading off to England, Australia and Iceland. We'll see what we get back. Right, our next signing is the American in Mason Scott. Uh, he is right-footed, but there really isn't any left-backs there available for us. Um, so, you know, if he can work on his weak foot, get that to a five-star, and we'll switch him across to a left-back for now, unless something else comes up on offer. Our final preseason game against AC Milan is a 3-3 draw. Not a lot of possession, but we get the job done. Scotty with a goal. 
Right, here's an interesting one. Bergman has been approached by Hertha Berlin. 34.9 million. Well, I think we're going to have to get ourselves a left back. Interesting to see here. Uh, I guess Gupta's coming through there at Bolton, but for them to sell off Bergman this quickly, it could be detrimental to the Bolton's future. But let's see if we can partner up the Icelandic man with the Icelandic manager. Well, there we go, Bergman. That is a big signing and uh, probably helps us close the gap a little bit there on Bolton. Interestingly enough, they don't think he's good enough. Well, Thor Gunnarsson does, and he's brought his countrymen across here to play for Newcastle United. The back line, looking not too bad. Rotenberg, well, he was from season one, I believe. It's just the midfield here that we need to replace. And obviously, uh, here on the right wing, perhaps we could try, uh, you know, Wallers out there soon possibly but I think we need to strengthen there and definitely pick up some midfielders for this team. Right our next signing is Dietrich Gruber the uh, the German centre midfielder from Dortmund he's come in for about uh, 25 million not too bad uh, but yeah that definitely helps us out in one of our midfield positions let's see what else we can bring on in. Right our next signing is Adam Yappi, the Ivorian centre midfielder we've pulled him across from PSG and it cost us 5 million but uh, hopefully you know, that's uh, one player to fill out our midfield. So really, we're just looking for a, a goalkeeper option and someone to play on the right-hand side and then bring in a bench and, you know, whatever else we've got coming through will help this squad because we are going to need a little bit of depth here playing in the Premier League. Right, we've transferred through a month and, uh, well, we've got a month left of the transfer window. I'm going to bring these Youth Academy players up to the squad and then uh, set them on a loan offer and see if, you know, we can get some little nibbles to uh, get these boys out and get them some minutes. All right, Carlos Luna's been approached by Inter. Let's swoop in on that one. All right, Carlos Luna makes his way to Newcastle United. 72 rated, so giving us a little bit more depth to the midfield. Uh, so it's just that right midfield position and a goalkeeper that we really need to uh, filter out and then look at maybe seeing what else we can upgrade. Uh, Rotenberg at a 69 in the CDM probably needs to be the first one that we need to look at. Right, we get ourselves a goalkeeper. It's the two return of Santi Suarez, the Spaniard goalkeeper, 78 rated. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do, but uh, probably the best option that we have. Uh, I was kind of hoping that Bangura would get sold, but uh, and Bolton holding on there. Uh, so we just need ourselves a right midfielder here before the first game of the season, which I believe is against Leicester City. Um, I mean, Wallace could possibly slip in there, but... Um, yeah, we still need to make a few more moves here in the next couple of days before the first game of the season. Right, the starting lineup has at least a complete team of regens. Ignacio Montoya is the final piece of the puzzle. 52 million from West Brom, but 80 rated. Uh, we didn't really get to see a lot of him, but uh, he's got some good stats now. And uh, hopefully he can help propel this team forward as we try and chase down Bolton. So let's look at the holes that we've got here. Still probably Rotenberg and uh, that centre-back position. We could go after 90-rated DeWolf and spend some real cash. Uh, I mean, we don't have a lot of defensive options coming through. And we've got the youngsters here. And then we've pretty much got to offloading most of the squad. Uh, just a couple more rows of Newcastle players that need to go. Um, but we're getting there. We are approaching that first game of the season. Right, with the money we had, we just had to do it. Rude DeWolf joins us from PSG for 140 million or something. Uh, 90 rated. Uh, we sent him off because he got, you know, that big deal come in. But uh, ready to come back and fight for the cause and show that he is better. Uh, so, you know, that sort of gives us a fairly decent platform. The midfield is probably the, the area that is lacking a little bit. And uh, relying on Gonzalez to score the goals, well, we'll have to see how that plays out. I think this is the squad that will take him to the first match. I'm going to give Bergman the captaincy to start with. Um, not a lot of options here off the bench at the moment. So the transfer window is still open. Uh, we'll see what we can do. But we want to see how this, uh, you know, squad starts to gel. I mean, the players will know each other. Most of them have probably played together in, in some sort of aspect of the game. Um, but yeah, squad's there. We've done a massive flip here at Newcastle United. And uh, hopefully it's onwards and upwards to try and uh, see what we can do here in the Premier League this season. Right, it's almost time for the first game of the season. I have gone through and created some new kits here for Newcastle United. Uh, the home kit, you know, the traditional black and white stripes with a little bit of a grit uh, with the gold numbers. The away kit is kind of based on the next season's away kit. Uh, you know, like a, an emerald and uh, gold, a bit of an Australian feel, which is what I like to see. And uh, the alternate kit, well, it's orange-white with the, the black and 
and white a little bit more interesting. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. We'll probably have to use that one here away against Leicester City. So it is time for the first game of the Premier League season. We've flipped this squad and we'll see what we can do. We'll obviously work out what holes we do have in this team, but uh, it's, it's looking serviceable. Hopefully Gonzalez can find some goals for us. Um, and Rottenberg, well, can he hold his own here in the midfield? He's definitely got a point to prove. Santi Suarez between the sticks. Let's get into this game here against Leicester City. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the Premier League kicks off once again. Thor Gunnarsson in control of a new side, Newcastle United. We're on the road here to take on Leicester City in the King Power Stadium. Faces brought back. The point to prove as Bergman leads Newcastle United out for this game against Leicester City. Can Thor Gunnarsson get another team up and running quickly? Here is Gonzalez. Akuma. He's got a point to prove as well. We will need a kit upgrade, I think. We'll get into that a little bit later. But, uh, yeah, here we go. Newcastle United. Can they get the job done here in the opening game of the season? Boys with a chip on their shoulder. And a really want to have a red-hot crack. Well, a new team in a different field. Oh, Johan Schultz here to save the day. But, uh, you know, got some solid options. The Wolf, it's out of me happy. Off to Bergman, lays it inside. Gonzalez gets the touch, but then gives it away in the midfield. So it's going to take a little while for all these boys to get back together and start clicking. Oh, Santi Suarez has his first save. And Bergman with the block, it's a corner for Leicester. Akuma trying to do some work here, and he does well. Akuma, Japanese winger. Just push his way forward. Oh, he's got some pace. I love to see it. Drives his way down the wing. He's got options inside the box. Delivers it deep. Montoya. Gonzalez. Good save, but offside. Unlucky. Oh, De Wolf. Well, that was a good purchase. Yampi plays it inside. De Wolf pushes forward. Finds Rottenberg. There's Gruber. Back inside for Rottenberg. It's not going to be the quarterback that Miyoyo was, but he'll play this one forward. Has Gruber. It's a good tackle. Everyone goes down. Zinchenko to come away. Another corner for Leicester. 17 minutes gone. And the defence being tested. High ball. Santi Suarez off his line well. Gruber sits out. Nearly get on the end of it. Rottenberg. Good challenge. Oh, ref. Free kick here for Leicester, 19 minutes gone. Up and over the top. Oh my days. Suarez went for it, but it's the opening goal here for Leicester. Quality free kick in the end here at the King Power Stadium. This man has got some magnificent hair. And uh, well, set piece is our downfall. It looked like Sandy Suarez got there, but uh, with the defender coming back in his way, I'm not too sure, that's going to hurt Santi, he's gone through the net. Oh, one over the top and bang, pass Juarez, Zerks has got two, Leicester are up 2-0. Newcastle United need a shift into gear, Thor Gunnarsson is going to have to give them a good rev up. Just definitely the midfield is uh, what is kind of lacking. It's not marking closely enough. The Wolf trying to look after everyone. It's a good finish. He's hit that well. 2 0. Leicester with a long searching ball. Mason Scott to do the work here at right back. Tries to get dug in. The Wolf does get dug in. Open up again. Bergman, good block. Scott plays it away. Here they come again. This man's already got two. Plays it inside. Laxon and quick ball out. Yappy. Bergman. Quick touches. Akuma. Well, there's a free kick, ref. Rottenberg inside. Here's Gonzalez. Plays one forward. Adam Yappy in on goal. Oh, that's terrible. Montoya. Can you recover? Yes, he can. Does well. Flips it inside. Gonzalez. Offside again. There is the whistle, half-time, 2-0 down to Leicester City. A lot of work here to do for Newcastle United. 
Laxman gets in, Rottenberg feeds it forward. Here is Adam Yappi. Will drive. Oh, and he's picked up on the ball. Zerxi offside. Oh, Suarez! Come on, lad! For fuck's sake, mate! Well, you put the faith in the rejected, and uh, well, sometimes you can see why they weren't good enough for Bolton. They've got to stand tall. What on earth was that? He should have just let it go out. He's trying to play it out of the back. Oh, that is woeful. 3-0 Leicester. Laxenden tries to get a challenge in. DeWolf does. Kuma. Yappy. Back out to Akuma. Pushes his way forward. He's got pace. Driving his way forward into the box. Still comes Akuma. Uh, we will get a corner here. Right, we're going to make some changes here. They're going to make one. We'll make three. So uh, Roger Thill checks in for Scott at right back. Adam Yappy checks out for Carlos Luna. And Jorgen Fredrickson is going to check in at CDM. Oh, my days! Boys! Oh, the defense is a shambles. What is going on there? 4 0 Leicester. Oh, a shell shock start here for Newcastle United. The ball comes across, still got a touch. Suarez had no idea. And it's just a simple. Well, it might even be an own goal. It's come off Laxman's arm. It's oh, everything falling for Leicester. It is an own goal against Jimmy Laxman. Roger Thill. Ruba. Fredrickson. Lays it off. Luna. Quick touch on. Here is Akuba. Works his way inside. Akuma! Oh, what a save! Wow! Bergman gets the touch. Akuma inside. Here is Luna. Back out wide for Akuma. Once he got left in the tank. Drives his way forward. Crosses in the box. Gonzalez! Well, he's on the board. Marcelino Gonzalez. Hasn't shown a lot today, but gets on the end of a Kuma pass, and uh, it won't be a clean sheet for Leicester. Akuma definitely has some pace to play with. It's a good ball inside, and well, a marksman's finish there from Gonzalez. 4-1, and a bit of a consolation there for Newcastle United today. Good from Phil. Garuba. Pushes his way forward, Luna, finds Akuma, back for Luna, over the top, Akuma comes flying through, here is Akuma, oh he's got it, 4-2, on well, Newcastle breakaway late, maybe a sign of things to come, Mitsuharu Akuma gets the finish, his first goal of the season. Good little ball over the top there from Luna, but, uh, burst of pace from Akuma and a good finish. 4-2. If goal difference comes into it, all well, these goals are priceless. And there is the whistle. So defeat on the opening day of the season, but some signs there that we might be able to build on it. Eight shots to seven, a pretty competitive game. Akuma gets a 10. Right, so with all the managerial stuff that we've taken care of in today's episode, it's probably just the one game in there, but I'm going to get some more suggestions and comments from you guys at home. This is our current sort of starting lineup. I'm almost wondering if Fredrickson should be playing that CDM role. He can play there, but um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, so these are the players that we have. Uh, the rest of these players will be moved on. The top four are all uh, Youth Academy players. Uh, if I need to, I'm just going to release all of these lads uh, once the transfer window is shut. Uh, but if you look at our squad depth, obviously we are lacking definitely through the midfield uh, and, and, and a striking option. Now, I'm hoping that maybe some other uh, Bolton players do become available. Uh, but let's go and have a look at our quick shortlist and maybe it'll give you some guys uh, the options to, you know, maybe there's another player that you would like to see brought into this squad. Right, so we're not focusing on the Bolton players. If they become available, we will pick them up because we don't want them going anywhere else. But let's have a look at what's remaining here on this short list. We've got Samuel Barker, 69 rated, uh, right midfielder. 
Chris Murphy, 65, probably not someone that we want to bring across now. Um, the defense isn't too bad. Uh, Krasnick Demi, uh, a backup option here at right midfield, and Rodri Evans at left midfield. We obviously do need some squad depth. Uh, Soon Jin Kang could be an option at 74 rated. As, you know, we need some half decent centre backs in case the Wolf gets injured. Uh, Petko Nikola of the right back. I don't think we need that position. Alex Jones, do we, well, we will need a backup goalkeeper. Maybe we get one from the Youth Academy instead. Uh, the Caravan at 67 rated. Uh, Zelinski at 76. I mean, is he a better option? I mean, 64 goalkeeping position. -y. That's a little bit rough. Uh, Lajos Farkas from Hungary, 69 rated. Some good acceleration. So uh, could be an option to back up on the left side. Uh, but we've got players there as well. Vizega at a 70. Uh, Gary Cullen at 65, but he's got some pace about him as well. Uh, Richard Johnson, an interesting one. Do we want to bring him in uh, midfield-wise? The Jamaican would be an option for us. Kimi Kosk as well. Uh, could play midfield at 73 rated. Morris Nassima as a backup left back. I mean, ugh, he's a little bit shaky. Got Nazarosh there at 77. The Latvian uh, has got some pace as well, but he would be in behind Akuma. Uh, Michael Nill at a 59, probably not. Uh, Lewis McEwen, do we want to bring him in as a striking option? Pick him back up from Real Madrid. Or Jasper Koenig at 77 rated could be the man that we need up top. Uh, Petrova at a 62. Salomon's only just moved to Olympic Lyon. He was definitely the one that I was looking at. Uh, Aleph Melka from Israel at 72 rated. Uh, Lazaro... Just, I just don't think he's worth bringing back. Um, wait, I didn't get a... Ozilish has gone to Leeds? We didn't get a mention of that. I definitely would have picked up Ozilish. Well, that's a shame. There was definitely no email that came in uh, about Ozilish. So, uh, unfortunately, he's made the move to Leeds. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there's one we've missed out, so uh, we'll have to wait and see what Bolton ends up doing. Right, so we'll definitely be following this season closely. Chelsea's already played their second game, so they are top of the table. Nottingham Forest, interestingly enough, won their first game, so they're up and about early. Uh, Bolton sit in 11th. They picked up a draw. Uh, I think that was against Man City as well. So, uh, yeah, 1-1 one, one draw against Man City. And, of course, we are with Newcastle United now. Unfortunately, that loss... Uh, has put us in 17th position. But we've got West Brom up next in the next episode. So make sure you get those comments down below. Uh, countries to scout and um, former players that you would like to see brought back to this team. Uh, we've got probably, well, what are we, mid-August. So a couple of weeks left. Uh, maybe Bolton will try and sell some off. But hopefully we can see those. Uh, I'm really annoyed that we missed the Ozilich offer. Uh, the big ostrich would have definitely played a part in this team above Laxon, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, there we go. That's episode one done and dusted. Make sure you smack the like button, subscribe if you're new around here, and hopefully you're ready for a campaign where, uh, well, we've got at least two games against Bolton, maybe a cup game. Who knows? But we look forward to that. We'll see you in the next one. I'm Aspiring DK. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, and you have a good one. The Sparring DK channel now has Patreon, and if you feel like just going that little extra step to help, uh, you know, the channel grow, you can go across to the website, pledge your allegiance to myself, and uh, for $1 a month, you're basically putting it in a jar and allowing for us to go and buy some more beers and record some more beer drinking episodes. Thank you very much to the current lads that have gone ahead and supported the channel. Absolutely tremendous to see anybody willing just to give that $1 a month at this stage. I cannot thank you from the bottom of my heart. You you really will make a difference in the future. So jump across there if you're that way inclined to the Patreon channel. Sign up today and we'll see if we can get some extra beer drinking episodes for you at home. Now if you are looking for some more content, we've got a couple of videos. One here, one here, and if you want to subscribe, there's a button right there. So go ahead, subscribe, and you'll be notified when the video...